Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Here in this video, we're going to be going over the data that came out this morning, which was PPI, what the general consensus is around bank earnings, and what happened last night that was some pretty big news as well with the whole Middle East, Houthi, U.S. attacking them situation. Now, AMC stock here in this video is down about 1.17%. So we'll specifically go over what's going on with AMC. Again, another red day. Again, a new multi-year low. In the next video, we'll talk about more what's coming next for our markets and for AMC. Um, but in this video, we'll talk about what's at least happening here on the day today. So hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you think about all of this information. What's important? What's not? What did you like? What did you not like? So let's start with, I think we need a little bit of good news. So let's start with a little bit of good news. Why not? You know, it's, it's Friday. Let's get, let's talk some good news. Okay. PPI, PPI month over month came in negative 0.1%. Wow. That is if you guys are unfamiliar, CPI is consumer price index. Think of it as consumer price inflation. PPI is producer price index. Think of it as producer price inflation. So producer inflation was actually negative in December. What does that mean? Well, that typically means that CPI could be following suit, right? You could see lower CPI in the months ahead. Typically, producers and consumers, it works with a lag. So if producers are saying deflation in this case, well, it's not going to show up that same month in CPI, but it might show up in January or in February or in March. It can be a longer term kind of um, uh, benefit to CPI, if you will, um, that doesn't exactly show up, you know, uh, the next month or even two or three months down the line. It, it can take some time sometimes to work its way to consumers. But that is definitely good. If anything, that's probably just going to say margins might be a little bit better than what Wall Street is expecting. If producers seen their uh, costs drop, that's going to be beneficial to margins, especially because we've seen CPI come in a little bit hotter than expected. So could be good news for company earnings in which we did just start earnings season and we have a little bit of good and bad news. It's not that the fact the U.S. deficit tops half a trillion dollars in the first quarter of the fiscal year, that's not the bad news. The bad news is bank earnings were not great. Why they were not great, a lot of it is actually interesting. It comes down to the banking crisis that we had back in March. A lot of your big banks are getting hit with these huge fees. It says JP Morgan Chase profit falls after $2.9 billion fee from regional bank rescues. But the earnings themselves actually came in better than expected. It says Bank of America shares fall after bank report. Uh, reports lower fourth quarter profit hit by regulatory charge but if you take this regulatory charge out and this charge from morgan stanley uh saying they will pay 249 million to settle a criminal sec block trade probe if you take out some of these these penalties and fees the bank earnings were actually okay so the bank earnings themselves not great because of this but take that out and it's actually okay so this is a little bit of good and bad news, right? It's bad news because the numbers just aren't great. It's good news because they would have been great if this whole banking crisis situation had not happened, if they were not being fined for that situation, right? So a little bit of good, a little bit of bad. Um, but overall, what's it saying? Well, it's saying it's, there's, it's a pretty good sign that the rest of earnings will at least be okay now delta delta indeed did not have fantastic earnings delta stocks uh or airline stocks tumble after delta trims profit forecast so they actually beat on their numbers um but their guidance um it, it was a little troubling for some people it says we expect to see an inflection point in the first part of this new year in terms of our domestic unit revenues turning positive um and delta has been doing pretty well over the past uh you know 
period of time. It says Delta forecast full year earnings per share of six to seven dollars below its previous estimate of more than seven dollars per share for 2024. Citigroup also announced they are cutting 10 percent of their workforce in CEO Jane Frazier's corporate overhaul. Not exactly great news as well for people that wanted to keep their job, um, you know, but it's one of those situations where you kind of have to, especially if we are going into some form of recessionary environment. Um, city city stock is up on that news today, but not exactly just great news overall. So what's the consensus today from the start of earnings season with banks? Well, it was actually pretty good. Regardless of the actual numbers, what would have been was, was pretty good. So that's a good sign that earnings for banks Big tech for our markets are going to be pretty good as well. I'm not sold on that thesis. I'm not super confident in that thesis. I think earnings are still going to be a major risk for stocks over the next two to three weeks or so. And it could cause more downside in our markets just because expectations are very high that earnings will be good. I mean, look at the S&P 500. The S&P is, is trading at basically all-time highs right now. If, if earnings underwhelm, with your big tech, it's going to be a, you know, down she goes kind of situation. So that is something that um, is definitely a risk factor out there. Now with AMC stock, again, no rhyme or reason to what's going on today. AMC stock is down about 1.3%. Um, in the beginning of the day today, stocks were doing a little bit better uh, because of that PPI data. You kind of seen an initial rally, even with AMC, but that has since given way to more downside. So AMC stock as a just single stock here is very much on the oversold side. So AMC stock is definitely due for a bounce with an RSI at 21.80. I mean, it's one of those situations though, where AMC is just an easy target until we get validation from Adam Aaron that we're not going to see dilution at the, in the fours, right? If we give it, if we get dilution in the fours, that's obviously a problem, right? That that just dilutes shareholders, doesn't really change the fundamental picture for AMC. And a lot of hedge funds and institutions just say, hey, this is, I mean, this is not worth it to go long AMC at $4 per share if we're going to see more dilution. And that also keeps shorts in their short positions. If we take a look here at the Ortex data, you do have 9.2% short interest of free float, $108.35 million worth of short positions, 1.16 days to cover, 23.05 million shares currently sold short, shares out on loan, 17.58 uh, million, cost to borrow 1.08%, utilization about 30%, and a short score of 5426 out of 100 cost to borrow average 1.26 percent cost to borrow minimum uh negative 0.2 percent and cost to borrow max at 2.32 percent so again not the most exciting numbers over here but i don't believe these numbers are accurate in my personal opinion if you take a look at the option activity today uh, the volume is about 52.71 percent to the call side 47.29 percent to the put side so not quite that you know large call to put you know, ratio that we're typically used to seeing. If you take a look at the interesting flow sentiment, you have seen three orders totaling $232,000 with a positive order value of 0%. So not a lot of activity over here as, as well in the options world, but that the activity that you have seen in AMC has been unfortunately negative, which is I, you know, not super surprising considering the stock is, is down and doing what it is. Now, here on the day today, today is January 12th, so it is Friday. You do have about 1,900 calls currently in the money, 82,000 calls out the money, in the money puts at 19,000, out the money puts at 14,000, so another big losing streak for the call buyers as well. For next, next week, people are going to be tested a little bit more. You do have 4,000 calls currently in the money, 233,000 calls that are out the money, in the money puts at 91,688, uh, out the money puts at about 53,000. So there's going to be a lot of 
option activity uh, for next week. And if you do see uh, a volatile market, if you do see an AMC that you know can move up or move down, it's likely to be exacerbated by the option activity that we have on the option chain, really to either direction. Uh, so definitely keep that in mind heading into the new week. We do have a new AI investor sentiment survey. It's not really changing at all. Uh, staying the same here, 48.6% bullish. Uh, neutral investors have dropped uh, from 27.9% to 27.2%, and that has been picked up to the bearish side from 23.5% to 24.2%. Honestly, not nearly as as bearish as um, I, 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 I would have thought, okay? So that's pretty interesting. You would have thought that maybe the bears would have picked up a little bit, but indeed that did not happen. So uh, there you have that. Now, in terms of what happened last night, so something happened last night that we that we want to be watching because uh, this could devolve into a larger situation that could affect our markets, and it is the Houthis. They've been attacking trade. I, th I think you guys, you know, kind of know that, right? Um, and, and, and that's the reason why shipping costs are up so much. Well, apparently, uh, we 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 bombed some targets last night um, that are are meant to kind of take away some of the um, uh, capabilities that they have to launch these attacks on commercial shipping vessels. And who knows if if that is going to happen. Um, but this could start a, you know, broader conflict in that area. You are seeing Volvo cars pauses production in Belgium due to Red Sea attacks. And this is also happening in uh, with 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 Tesla in their Giga Berlin uh, factory over over in Berlin. They are also pausing production for a period of time because of this. Um, and, and basically, the Houthis said there will be a uh, you know large price to pay. So who knows exactly what that means? But uh, it, it it could you know turn into a worse event, right? And uh, be a bigger problem for trade for a longer period of time. U.S. and Britain seek to turn the Red Sea into a sea of bro of blood, says Turkey's Aragon. Um, yeah, I, I mean. Who knows, right? Uh, Maersk hopes interventions will lead to ability to use the Red Sea route again. And that's ultimately what we want because shipping costs are up big time. If you take a look here, shipping costs have went pretty parabolic um, considering everything that's been happening. And they're really not going down at all. That could start to eke into inflationary pressures. And that's the last thing we want. And that's probably, you know, a, a big driver to why, you know, we attacked the Houthis last night alongside the UK with support of other uh, nations. Now, if you take a look here at stock twits, you do have bearish sentiment, extremely bearish at three message volume at high of 66. So, you know, OK, um, you definitely want to see sentiment go higher, but that's not going to happen until AMC stock goes higher. So you're in a very interesting situation in regards to that uh, message volume being high. That's obviously good. People are paying attention to AMC, but you know, it, 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 it's just Red Dead, you know, Red Dead Redemption every single day. It just continues to fall. One of those crappy situations. The RSI, as I previously mentioned, very oversold. The MACD is also negative. And unfortunately, there's no telling when this thing stops. You could fall a lot more from here, especially if you get dilution. Then, you know, AMC stock could, could fall into the threes or the twos or potentially even the ones. Um, it, it all depends on whether or not we see dilution. And I'm not convinced that Adam Aaron is ready yet, to be, to, to be honest, to give us a dilution to not uh, a commitment to not diluting shareholders. I think it would have already happened. I don't know why it hasn't happened. I don't know if Adam Aaron just doesn't understand the corporate world or or um, how to run a stock price um, to the best ability that, that he possibly can. I don't know. But something is uh, definitely happening over there in the management that is delaying that announcement from taking place. So we'll have to wait and see, guys. 
that's all I have for you here in today's video. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section. You guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.